Claude code on the web just got released. First major question is that, is this any better than Codex or Cursor AI? In addition, I'll show you how to set this up and make sure you get the most value out of it. So if that all sounds good, make sure to leave a like right off the bat and let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. In this video, we're gonna be checking out Claude code. If you wanna get updates like this as fast as possible, make sure to check me out on X. Already did a whole post on it. But I'm interested to see this. Essentially, TLDR, what's the use case of this, Corbin? You can code anywhere. Idea being that you don't necessarily have to have the code in your IDE or your local computer. You could, in theory, just connect to the internet, put in a little request, and then it's going to use cloud-based services in order to push the relevant code changes, which is cool. But obviously, if anyone accesses your Claude account and they have access to your repo, then your code's cooked. But let's check it out. So like any of these AI coding platforms, we're gonna connect with GitHub. I'll make sure to also leave a 40 minute guide of everything you need to know about GitHub in the description down below, as obviously with all these little AI coding bot things, you're gonna need to know how to use GitHub. It's a fundamental skill you gotta have in this new age, in the vibe coding age, authorized Claude. So first it's gonna prompt us with the level of security. I'm gonna go with trusted network access. This is gonna allow us to download specific packages in order to run applications. Although if you're working with a real software's code repository, I would encourage you to either choose custom access or no network access. As you are putting your code at risk, in theory, by giving it the ability to access the network. But in reality, it might not be that deep in your situation. I'm just saying from experience, specifically when working with real company code, there is usually VPNs involved. Usually you can only access that code through a specific network, but if none of that really matters to you, then don't worry, just go with recommended. Trusted network access. Next, we're gonna select our repository. So we got a bunch of different options here. And in the short term, it seems like it will only have access to public repositories that are currently associated with your account. So things like this public repo where I built out an entire Claude skill, it has direct access to, but I wanna give you access to specific private repos. So I'm gonna do install GitHub app. Now when installing it this way, now we have the ability to granularize by the type of repository or do all. For now, I do all, install and authorize. So what it does is when I do that, it takes me back to the settings page, but let me show you how to revoke access if needed. So going back over GitHub here, let's just say you've used it and you're like, Corbin, I absolutely hate Claude code. Then all you need to do is come up here to your settings. Also, make sure to throw me a follow. Resource code every single week. Just download my code. Hashtag free code Corbin. Go to your settings here. Scroll down to where it says applications. And you can see all the relevant applications that are currently integrated into my GitHub portfolio. Hit configure. And then right here is simply where we can change its specific access. Or alternatively, get out of my repo cloud and uninstall it or suspend it. Let's check it out though. We are going to use test app here. Uh, test app simply is a repository that is a React app. Literally just did one command of just install a React front end and ended up with this. And to be honest with you all, I don't even know why this is private. So let me actually make this public real quick. So I guess you'll learn something real quick in GitHub to make a repository public. Go to settings, scroll all the way down, change visibility, change to public. I want to make it public. And the reason I made it public is you can simply come to my profile here, description down below, steal my code find the repository that says test app. You can download it yourself and then do these little tests that I'm about to show you. So once I have it selected here, we have the environment. The environment is specifically where we set high risk variables. This right here is when your application leverages different secret variables or high risk variables like API keys. For example, OpenAI's API key. Maybe you have like a hybrid app that uses Anthropic and OpenAI. You simply put the API key here. If in your relevant code directory, you reference it in your .env, which I know I don't have one here, but it's a test app, but you know, .env, or not .env, .env. You know, if you have any type of high risk variables there, you will simply put there. If that only really makes sense, check out my courses here and I'll show you how to build out a software from scratch. And when I say courses, not like there's a paywall. YouTube has this new feature. If you go to my profile and there's like a tab called courses now, all of it's free and it's lesson by lesson. I know courses has like a really bad negative stigma around it. So let's just call them learn AI with me. AI. Fun. So let's show off one of its features here, such as parallel task. So I'll go and show this in the test app here. I'm going to first request dark UI. Second, I'm going to request this counter go up by two and down by two every time I press this button. So boom. And then I'll be like, okay, this is going off. Make UI dark. Boom. Again. So what this is essentially doing is it allows for parallel task. And then what each task will do is try to create its own PR. Obviously, we can enable notifications as well. So if you want to just be scrolling through X or check me out on X, you can enable this. 
So I'll enable it. Essentially what's going on here is we are creating two separate sandbox environments. What I mean by sandbox environment is it's installing all the relevant dependencies required to run your application. And when I say dependencies, I'm referring to your package.json here, everything that's required to actually run and render your application. It's creating a little bubble for it to run it in just for safety reasons. And so that it doesn't get a little crazy and it can run this in a cloud environment. So once this is going, we have two separate parallel tasks going. Obviously, I wouldn't set this up so that when you use this, these parallel tasks are counterintuitive. And what I mean by that is, for example, this task was create dark UI. And then we put another task that says create light UI, you might as well pair that up into one type of task. So your prompt is more meaty up here rather than just two separate. So once a task is complete here, you can notice it as create PR. So I'm click that. And because it has access to our specific repository here, I can simply say create pull request. I know some of you are like, Corbin, what about your comparison with codex and cursor? I I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. Let me just show you the fundamentals. We get a nice little description here. Modify counter button, increase, decrease by two. Nice, create pull request, no conflicts, and I can merge it for merge. I'm gonna delete the branch. And then fundamentally, we just got our first commit ever done with cloud code and merged into our main little app here. Obviously to pull this into our local code, I'll simply do get most recent code from GitHub or you do like a git pull origin main, but it seems like nowadays we can literally just talk to the AI and it'll do it all for us. We don't need to know git commands anymore, it's fun. Or are we getting dumber? I don't know. So then next we have this still going. So we got the UI as well. So I create PR right here. It's outlining everything that's changed here. Nice, create pull request. And this kind of gets into the second thing I wanted to talk about, which is this can be quite excessive for small changes to do a PR every single time. So I'm gonna merge this real quick again, delete branch is fine. We're gonna see the changes pretty soon here, but notate that, understand that when using Claude code here, okay, yeah, if it's gonna be a small bug fix, fix the bug, fix it. But if you're doing something bigger, then I would leverage more meaty prompts and jive down a bigger rabbit hole when leveraging this little chat feature right here. So obviously I don't have to create the PR yet, but we can create iterations of this and keep talking to Claude until we are satisfied with the results. And of course, again, you could in theory create the PR right now and then not merge it and then create iterations with reply to Claude. So I'm gonna pull the most recent code again because we just merged two different PRs. There we go. You'll know it's successfully merged when you see this little thing right here, hit commits. You can see it's getting pulled here. When I say pull, it's just grabbing the code. So perfect, so coming back over to our counter, we have a dark UI, plus two, minus two, minus two, minus two, plus two, plus two. I'm a robot, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero, zero binary. <laughs> nice. But how does this compare to the other coding platforms? If you already find yourself entrenched in the Claude ecosystem, then yeah, you can leverage this. Here are some things that this doesn't have that Codex has though. What Codex has, and I'm actually gonna release a video here pretty soon, so make sure to subscribe here of how to upgrade Codex, is it has something called versions, and it has something called code review. Here's the TLDR of what that means. Essentially, versions allows you to do, hey, I want a dark theme. And it gives you three different versions of that for your front end. Three different little code differences, right? What does code review mean? It is extremely dope. Literally, you do at codex in the PR, and then ChatGPT will check your PR and point out bugs or situations that could break your application. A whole nother video is coming out on that, so just subscribe here. It should be coming out literally tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, after this one. So where does that leave us with which tool to use? To be honest with you, it's diversified. E.g., we use the tools that work best for whatever part of the pipeline of your software development you are currently in. So for example, if you absolutely love Claude, I love Claude, you could use Claude code here, or in theory, our base level could be, okay, local code, I work in the cursor IDE. When I'm mobile, maybe don't wanna pull out my cursor IDE, I use Claude code. And when I push a PR, I use Codex to review that code. And then obviously it all just shows up here and you have your fresh new application. Let me know in the comments if you want me to dive into a video that really shows you how to use every single one of these tools in the most effective way because in reality, it's not a one size fit all situation. But without further ado, as you already know of these style videos, make sure you leave a like, it is completely free. I'll see you in the next. Why do I feel like in one or two weeks, Claude Code is also gonna come off a new ability that does code review, so then everything you watch in this video, you're gonna be like, Corbin, hey, do you know by the way that Codex is not the only one that can do code review, but so can Claude? Well, my bad, I posted this video two weeks before. <laughs> Type of video. <laughs> nice.